Hey Omis, welcome to Om Yoga. I am Mary Omira. This week's class is a 60 minute core power full body flow where we're going to be working literally head to toe, getting into some areas where we just need to kind of sit with it a little bit. We're going to be utilizing the essential oil piece and calming. If you don't have it, use what you have on hand or click the link in the comments below to grab your own. And you may or may not need two blocks. If you don't have them, don't stress yourself out about it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, share the love, spread the love, send us around into the yoga community. Give us a thumbs up if you like this class. Always leave your comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. And if you want to follow me outside of YouTube, you can connect with me on Instagram at Mary underscore Om Yoga. You can also connect with my monthly newsletter at www.essentiallyom.com. All right, yogis, let's get started. All right, Omis, we're going to begin seated. Um, find the most comfortable position for you. It can be cross-legged. If lotus is your thing, do it. But if you aren't warmed up, don't do it. We're also going to be here for just a little bit. So if it's more comfortable for you, you can take a block and place it underneath your hips just so that we're not compressing so much. We're also going to start with the application of our oil. So we're going to take our piece and calming. You can diffuse this. We're going to place a drop on our hands. We rub our hands together, create our scent tent, <laughs> cupping our hands over our nose and taking three big inhales. And then we're going to find ourselves with our hands on our thighs, facing up if we need to invite in energy, facing down if we want to ground our energy in. We're going to close the eyes and begin to pull the navel in as you take the shoulders over the hips. And just begin with observation. Taking a scan of the body, how it feels today. And before we change the breath, again, observing. How is it moving? Is it flowing? Is it not? Is there a rhythm? Maybe you even feel the temperature of the breath. It's a cold and rainy day here in Southern California. And so you may hear the rain in the background. Right? And so for me, I very much feel as though everything is just a little bit cooler. But in the beauty of it, there's also cleansing taking place. So maybe even noticing and feeling and tapping into your environment today. What is it sharing and showing? Begin to deepen the breath. Allow the breath to move all the way down into the hips as you inhale. And as you exhale, feel everything begin to close and clear, but not close in a negative way. Okay, let's tune into our breath together. Wherever you are, take a nice audible exhale out through the mouth. In through the nose, again, breathing into the hips, full belly. And exhale, allowing it to leave and closing behind us. Again, in through the nose, bringing in new. Out through the mouth, letting go of old and stale. Again, in. Out. Seal the lips. Allow your breath to move in and out through the nose. And our intention today is sit with it. In the midst of emotions, upheaval, or chaos, it's easy to want to run and hide. Growth does not happen in the dark. It takes place in the light. Yes, dark times can cause growth. However, it doesn't happen when we hide. We've got to step out and sit within these moments to embrace them. We will get past the hurt, chaos, and challenges faster if we do. It won't make them go away, but it will allow for them to be less painful. What beauty buried in the pain 
can we shine light on today? May we find it and sit with it rather than hide it in the dark. Slowly begin to bring your awareness into your body, into your space. If you're sitting on the block, go ahead and remove. And if you're not faced forward on your mat, go ahead and find your way there. We're gonna get into the body still seated. Okay, so I want us to feel very grounded through the sit bones. We're gonna inhale, reach the arms towards the sky, palms face one another. As we exhale, we're gonna take the left hand down and we're gonna to begin to reach the right arm up and over. So there's varying degrees of where we can take this. We can stay lifted or we can begin to slide the left hand out, maybe even coming down to the forearm. But if that causes the right hip to lift up at all, I want you to back off. Use the pressure in the left hand or forearm to press the right hip down to the ground. Draw the navel and inhale, reach through the crown of the head. As you exhale, begin to lean more towards the left, reaching the fingertips over and up. And then as we inhale, come through center, windmill the hands, take the right hand down. Now the left arm comes up and over. Chest is square, hips are obviously square, hopefully square as we're sitting on them. And then we begin to find the depth of lean that we want. So either the right hand stays down or we begin to slide it out, bringing the right forearm down to the ground. But if your body doesn't wanna go all the way down, don't take it there. Belly in. Breath soft, inhale, exhale. Inhale, windmill the arms back up. Now as we exhale, right hand to the left knee as the left hand either comes behind us to pause or you can take it to a bind, taking the left hand around for the right inner thigh. But if that doesn't work for you, again, don't go there. Inhale, reach through the crown of the head, chest is still forward. As we exhale, we get into the twist with the gaze. So we look over towards the left shoulder or maybe beyond. Stay with the breath. And then as we inhale, back to center, arms sweep up. And as we exhale, taking it around to the opposite side. So now the left hand comes to the right knee. Maybe the left hand, rather the right hand is directly behind you, creating your wall, or you take your right hand around for the left inner thigh. Inhale to reach through the crown of the head. And then as you exhale to get into your twist, you go with your gaze walking it to the side or maybe back behind you. Belly strong, make sure that everything stays forward. This is a twist for the upper back. And then as we inhale, coming back, sweeping the arms up. As you exhale, bring your hands down, step your way further back on your mat if you need to. We're gonna find our way into our downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift the hips, press the chest back. And don't worry about the heels touching the floor. Maybe they don't today, maybe they won't ever. Guess what, it doesn't matter. If your heels do touch the ground, think about maybe lifting the toes, but don't push it. We don't wanna push the Achilles too much. Find some movement, bending into one knee and then the other. Staying with the breath. Come back to stillness. As you inhale, lift up onto your tippy toes. As you exhale, come into a hovered tabletop. So your knees are gonna hover about two inches above the mat. Okay. Now as we inhale, lift the hips up towards the sky. As you exhale, now begin to lower the heels. Again, inhale up onto the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend into the knees, hover. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, lower the heels. Again, lift the heels, inhale. Exhale, hover the knees, bend. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Now as you inhale, look forward. And as you exhale, you're gonna step your feet behind your hands, hip distance parallel, ragdoll for a moment. So your hands can stay to the ground. Deepest bend in your knees here. You want your stomach to, and thighs to connect. 
grabbing onto opposite elbows if you want. Or maybe you keep your hands down. Just allow the weight to be forward towards the toes. And as you hang, the weight of your head should create a nice little release. It's about eight to 10 pounds. And so it's gently creating a release for the neck, upper back. And then release your hands down to the ground, toe heel your feet together, big toes to touch. Unless it feels better for you to stay hip distance apart, do that. Inhale into your halfway lift, lengthen the heart forward, hands to shins here or fingertips to floor. I want you to imagine yourself creating a seven shape here. So the belly is strong, legs are locked, quads are on, crown of the head reaches forward. Okay, so I don't want us to just be hanging out. This is very active. As you exhale, we fold. Inhale, slowly rise now, coming to stand. One vertebra at a time as we roll up. Once we get to the top, allow the shoulders to roll up towards the ears and then down the spine. Palms can face forward for a moment. Now as you inhale, sweep the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, let the palms touch. As you exhale, hands to heart center, Sama Sitihi. You're going to bring your gaze down to your fingertips and close your eyes. Unless that causes you to feel dizzy, keep them open. Let's take a moment and connect in with a personal intention. Where in our life do we need to sit with it? What is it that we need to sit with? How? Why? Who even? Wherever you are, take a nice audible exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> Inhale in through the nose, breathing deep into the belly. Audible exhale, sigh, let it go. Again, inhale, breathing in the ability to sit with it. And an audible exhale, sigh, let it go. Slowly begin to open the eyes. Release the hands by the sides, and we're gonna get into our flow. We're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. Now as you exhale, you're gonna actually take your feet hip distance apart, but if you're already there, great. If not, step them out a little bit. Now as you exhale, bring your palms facing the ground. They're gonna be level with the shoulders here, hands level with the shoulders. Take the shoulders, roll them back and down, and then I want you to imagine you're pressing on a countertop. Your belly should get strong here as the weight into the heels gets firm as well. Inhale. Now as we exhale, we're gonna sit into our awkward chair. Belly is strong, weight in the heels, breath is soft. Maybe you find your way to where your thighs are parallel with the ground. Maybe not. Again, where do you need to sit with it without pushing yourself over the edge? Right? We're going to sit with the body today, not with the ego. Now as we inhale, very, very slowly rise back up. Arms up to the sky. As you exhale, lift up onto your tippy toes. Another inhale to reach through the crown of the head. As you exhale, again, palms come back down, face down, hands parallel with the shoulders, level with the shoulders. Then begin to sit into your awkward chair. It takes strength, but you've got it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on your mat with me, right? Or maybe that's why you're here, to build strength. That's what we're going to do. Again, belly strong. Try to lift the heels as high as you can. Maybe you come parallel, thighs parallel with the floor. Maybe. As you inhale, how slowly can you rise? Reach the arms to this guy. It's an absolute downpour here now. As you exhale, lower the heels. Let's release the hands by the sides for a moment before we get into our third round. All right, so if you live in Southern California, you know rain is not normal. This year it's been somewhat normal and it's been amazing, but weather-wise, rain is very cleansing, okay? So again, this is how, what I had you check in with in the beginning of class. What is your environment showing you? If you have questions, you can comment um, below and I can help figure it out for you. All right, third round of our awkward series. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky, pull the belly in. You should feel strong here. Now we're going to lift up onto the tippy toes. You're going to come into the 
chair that we just did if you have Achilles or ankle issues. Otherwise, you're gonna to begin to bend into the knees slightly, drop the knees together now, then begin to lower, bring the arms down, hands parallel with the shoulders, belly strong. Maybe you come all the way down, don't let your bottom and your heels touch. Say what? We're gonna hold five, four, three, two, sit with it. Inhale, stand back up, keep everything where it is. Arms to the sky, separate the knees, whoop, heels down. <laughs> Take your hands to your heart center. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's forward fold, releasing the hands to the ground. Halfway lift as you inhale, despite what people think, I am not perfect in my practice. As you exhale, you're gonna find your way into your first chaturanga. This is actually um, our first, we're not doing sun A's today, so I think there's like three less chaturangas. You are welcome. <laughs> Lift your heart up, dog, inhale. As you exhale, press it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, look to the top of your mat. As you exhale, step your feet back to the top, big toes to touch. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold as we exhale. Sit deep, Utkatasana. Chair pose, arms to the sky. Now as we exhale, we're gonna find our airplane arms, so the perch pose. So the chest comes forward, tailbone down, and then maybe you lift up onto your feet, up onto your tippy toes rather. If this is uncomfortable for you, by all means, keep your feet down to the ground. And we just hold for three, two, and one. You're gonna lower the heels down now, and then as you inhale, you're gonna lift the left leg up. So it's kind of like our flaming, not flamingo pose. Um, yes, flamingo pose. Okay, you can stay here or begin to lift the left heel towards the sky. The more you lean your heart forward, the easier it is to do this. Now everybody, from here, step your left leg back. Inhale, crescent pose. Draw the right hip back, left hip forward. You can have a slight bend in your back knee here. You do not need to be straight, okay? But you do wanna make sure that the right thigh is somewhat parallel to the ground. Don't let the right knee go forward. Inhale. As you exhale, warrior two, open up. So the bend in the front knee stays. You might need to adjust your stance a little bit. Belly is in, pelvic floor is lifted. As we inhale now, star pose. Right foot comes in, and then as we exhale, warrior two to the back. So we have a 90 degree with the back foot. Make sure that the left knee is either on top of or behind the heel. We don't want it forward, okay? And now as we inhale, come into your crescent at the back of your mat. And pause, maybe you bend into your back knee, maybe you don't. Stay strong with the breath, inhale. As you exhale, step to the back of your mat, chair pose. And then again, inhale, lift the heart. As you exhale, perch, fly the arms back, belly in, slightly tuck the chin, lean the heart forward. You can stay on your heels or you lift the heels. And we hold for three, two, and one. We're gonna lower the heels back down. We're gonna inhale, reach the right leg up. Again, heel can lift towards the sky. Lean the heart forward if you're doing this. Otherwise, you're just keeping your knees together with the right foot lifted. Inhale, as you exhale, step back into your crescent lunge. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star, left toes in. Exhale, warrior two, we're back to the front of the mat. Inhale, reverse your warrior, right arm up and back. As you exhale, release it down, vinyasa. Chaturanga, we lower halfway. Remember, don't let the shoulders dip forward. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
And as you exhale, press back downward facing dog. If chaturanga is not in your practice, don't push it. I have a video that explains how to do them. I would recommend cat and cow instead, or simply press back to down dog. Okay. Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, you're gonna step, hop, or walk your way to the top. Halfway lift, inhale, full breath in. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sit with it, chair pose. As you exhale, airplane the arms, perch pose. Getting into the second side, you're gonna inhale, lift the right leg up this time, heel towards the sky. We've already done this on the other side, but we're doing it again. Okay, inhale now and begin to extend the right leg back. As you exhale, how softly can you land? Crescent prep, inhale, crescent pose, arms to the sky. Exhale, warrior two, we're flowing with this now. Inhale, star. Exhale, warrior two to the back of your mat. Inhale, crescent to the back. Exhale, chair pose. Lift the heart as you inhale. Exhale, fly the arms. Ooh, we didn't lift up onto the heels on the other side. Do it now, lift up onto your tippy toes, lift the heels, three, two, and one. Lower the heels. You're gonna lift the left leg up. As you exhale, step it back. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, back to the front, warrior two. Inhale to reverse. And as you exhale, find your way to downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, make your way back to the top. Halfway lift, full breath in. Fold as you exhale. Sit deep as you inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fly the arms. Inhale, lift up onto the tippy toes. As you exhale, pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. One, we gotta make up for it. <laughs> then lower the heels back down. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Reach the heel towards the sky. Step it back, inhale into your crescent. Rise up this time, one breath. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, warrior two, to the back. Inhale, crescent to the back. Exhale, chair. Inhale, up onto your tippy toes. Exhale, find your perch. And we pulse. Five, four, three, two, and one. Heels down. Inhale, take the left leg. Just kidding, your right leg up. <laughs> Step it back, inhale, crescent. We're gonna sit with it, y'all. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, warrior two to the front. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, release. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or hop. Back to the top. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold as you exhale. Sit deep on your inhale, chair pose. Exhale, perch, fly the arms. Inhale, up onto the tippy toes, and we pulse. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lower the heels. Lift the right leg, bend into the knee. Maybe you reach the heel towards the sky. Everybody, inhale, crescent, step it back, lift up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, warrior two to the back. Inhale, crescent to the back. Exhale, chair to the back. Inhale to lift the heart. Exhale, fly the arms. 
Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, we pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Heels down. Lift your left leg up. Inhale. Exhale, step it back. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, warrior two to the front. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, release it down. Vinyasa. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, we have one more round each side. You got this, you can sit with it. <laughs> Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, step or hop your way to the top. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold as you exhale. Sit deep as you inhale, chair. Exhale, perch. Inhale onto the tippy toes. Pulse, five, four, three, two, one. Lower the heels. Lift the left leg. Step it back. Crescent. Warrior two, move with your breath. I'm not gonna cue it so there's no rush. Star. Warrior two to the back. Crescent to the back. Chair to the back. Heels lift. Perch pose. We pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Heels down. Right leg lifts, crescent, step it back, arms up. Warrior two, star. Warrior two to the front, reverse. Release, chaturanga. Up dog, down dog, last side through. Look forward, inhale. Exhale to the top. Halfway lift, full breath in. Fold as you exhale. Sit deep, Utkatasana, chair. Perch, tippy toes. We pulse, five, four, three, two, one. Heels down, right heel lifts. Extend the leg back. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, warrior two to the back. Inhale, crescent to the back. Exhale, chair. I didn't lie when I said we were getting into quads. <laughs> Perch. Find your breath, lift your heels. Pulse, five, four, three, two, one. Chair, stay in your perch. Left leg lifts. Crescent, step it back, arms up. Warrior two. Star. Warrior two to the front. Reverse. Release. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, step forward, have a seat. Whew. All right. Who's ready for a break? All right, grab a quick sip of water if you need one, or if you even have one, towel off if you need to. Um, we're not done with chair because the name of this class is sit with it. Um, but we will, we will sit in just a minute. All right. But we are going to begin. I just wanted you guys to sit down, <laughs> connect a little bit. Let's begin back in our chair pose. Okay. So I'm going to offer you guys variations for this. I like to have fun with this. Um, but if that's not where you want to go today, don't worry about it. All right. So I'm going to show you where we're going and then offer layers. We're gonna come into our chair pose as we inhale. Then as we exhale, we're gonna sit and come into our boat. And then we come back into our chair, okay? 
If that's not where you are today, what you're gonna do, you can even come into boat. If you're like, Mary, I'm not even, boat's not even where I am either. Okay, fine. <laughs> you're gonna come into your modified boat, hands behind the thighs, lift the heart, lift the chest. As long as you don't have back issues, disc issues, you can begin to lean back. So if you do have back issues, you're not gonna do chair to boat, okay? You're gonna stay here. You could even come into a forearm plank, all right? Um, yep, so that's what we're gonna do, got it? All right, let's begin. Stand up on your mat. Feet together or separate, whatever works for you. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, sit into your chair. Lift the heart, inhale. As you exhale, boat. Chair. Boat. I promise you this gets easier the more you do it. Chair. I've also heard that how you can get up depends on how you're aging. <laughs> chair. Boat. Boat. Just kidding. Back to boat. Okay. Chair. Boat. And then I'm just do it. Just roll with it so I'm not cueing and rushing anything. We're going to stay with this for the next 30 seconds. Last two for whatever you're doing. Last one, come into boat. Unless you have back issues, we're gonna hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the feet down, open the knees, take the chest through, inhale, look up. As you exhale, chin to chest, round the spine. Back, inhale, gaze up. Exhale, chin to chest. So we're gonna be moving into a little bit of a practice um, for where we're going, and then we're gonna move on and finish up class. Sound good? Okay. Um, so we're gonna do our boat again, and if you just held your boat that whole time, good for you, you're gonna be even stronger. So options, hands behind the thighs, lift the heart, lift the chest. We're all gonna begin here, and then we're gonna begin to lean back as long as we don't have disc issues. Then we lift the arms. Okay. Then maybe we take the shins parallel with the floor. Maybe we straighten the legs, but if that causes us to feel unsteady, back off. And we only hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Cross at your ankles, your hands come forward. Heels come to the floor, one heel rather. Lift the bottom, lower down. If you try to come here with your hands at your sides, you're not gonna lift anywhere. Back to boat, five, Four, three, two, and one. Cross, hands forward and down. Lift, lower, back to boat. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hands down, lift, lower. Last one, five, four, three, two, and one, cross, hands forward and down. We lift and we lower. Now we're gonna come into our upati here, our, our lifted lotus. However, there's many variations for this. We're not gonna do a strap today. I'm not gonna break it down too much today because we still have the rest of class that we need to get through. So you have your blocks, maybe. If you don't, don't worry about it. So we've done the practice before where we've, you know, tied the legs and that way we're connected and we can lift, you know, yada, yada, yada. Today we're not gonna use props for that though. The only thing that we may use is the blocks. So I'm gonna show you where you can take this. We're eventually, I shouldn't say eventually, um, for those of us who are able, we're gonna come into our full lotus, okay? Which is your right leg on top and then your left. We're very active and engaged the entire time we take ourselves into Lotus. I'm in Lotus right now. I am flexing my feet. My feet are active. My ankles aren't sickling in and it's not putting any st undue stress on my knees and I'm comfortable. Half Lotus is your right leg on top, left leg underneath you. If that's not where you need to be, again, don't push it. I promise you, it's not worth it to push yourself for a yoga pose, I promise. Okay, if this isn't where you are, you're gonna do crisscross applesauce. You can also practice this just as we did with our boat. It's the same idea, is the feet can just be in front of you and you're gonna hook your feet together. Okay, so we're coming into our lifted lotus. I want you to find your way there. 
into your prep pose, your prep seated pose, I should say. Then from here, once we're there, no blocks yet. Again, your hands are forward and down. So they're halfway in between the hip and the knee. Because if we try to lift from back here, it's not gonna, physically not gonna happen. Give yourself the advantage, right? So hands are forward and down and flat. We're not trying to do this on the fingertips. Take an inhale. As you exhale, you lift. Okay, and then we lower. Maybe you're not lifting, that's okay. It's the action of the intention, right? Or the intention of the action. You're lifting the pelvic floor, drawing the belly in. Now, if you're like trying to do this and you're like, Mary, I got short arms. It's called short arm syndrome. It's SAS, totally a thing. You're gonna grab your blocks for this. Take them by your sides. Make sure that they are flat. Make sure they're not off the side of your mat, okay? Hands are still forward as they would be if they were on the ground. You're gonna pull the belly in, lift the pelvic floor, take an inhale. Now as you exhale, you lift. Yes, you're obviously gonna get height because your blocks are what, four inches? So you should be lifting. This is just to give you the idea of the feel of the lift. Try not to use your blocks if you can, okay? Hands are forward and down. We're gonna do this about three more times together. And again, the idea behind this is we are sitting with it. Maybe your feet are crossed in front of you and that's completely okay. That's actually gonna help you if you're ever working on jump backs, okay? Let's find our lifted lotus. Take an inhale. As you exhale, press and lift. Lower, inhale. Exhale, press and lift. Lower, last one, inhale, exhale, lift. I think I said we're gonna do it four times, so one more time, okay? Take an inhale, exhale, press and lift, and we hold, five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down, uncross the legs, find your way to your downward facing dog. We have the rest of class we need to get through, all right. Once you're in your down dog, pedal it out. And more importantly, sit with how you did or didn't do that, okay? Release the ego saying, you didn't do that good enough. You didn't lift high enough. We have to have a benchmark in our practice and in our life, right? We have to know where we begin so that we can grow. Okay, I did not start my practice off almost eight years ago do, being able to do most of what I can do today. We've got to start somewhere. So use this to your advantage of where was I and then let it go. Because guess what? It's over now. <laughs> Bring that to the light, right? All right, moving on. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or hop back to the top. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, coming into your stork. So you're gonna bend into your right knee, lift the foot off the ground, knee is hip level. Another inhale to reach to the crown of the head. Flex the right foot. As you exhale, come into your figure four. So take your hands to your heart center, and then maybe you stay a little lifted and not so deep within, it, within the chair, right? The, the less, um, let me say this a different way. <laughs> when we aren't deep into our seat, we're not pressing into the hip as much. So if it doesn't feel good for you, don't sit deeper. If you want to, you can begin to sit deeper. Listen to the body. See if you can keep the right foot flexed, absolutely flexed. And then rather than having your hands at your heart, if it's too much, you can work to bring your fingertips towards the floor. You also have your blocks. We're gonna stay here for one more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, come back to our stork. Bend into the right knee, use the core to lift. As we exhale, we're gonna step into our warrior one. So take a moment to adjust your stance. You want your hips somewhat square to the front. So maybe you need to widen your stance, maybe you need to shorten it, maybe you don't need to do either, maybe you need to do both. <laughs> Inhale, lift the arms to the sky. 
belly strong. As you exhale, begin to sit a little deeper into the left knee. Make sure it doesn't go forward. You want your left thigh parallel. As you exhale, take your hands behind your back, interlace, take the left thumb on top, roll the shoulders back and down, inhale, gaze up. As you exhale, get humble, take the left shoulder to the inside of the left knee or back up, take your left shoulder to the top of the left thigh. See if you can take your hands to touch, so you're gonna micro bend your elbows. If that's too intense for you, you can always take your hands to your low back, release your hands, and then grab onto opposite elbows. Find what feels good for where you are today. Let the gaze fall back to the right foot, inhale. Exhale. So this is a asana that's very easy to wanna to come out of. Okay, sit with it. Use your breath, breathe into it. This posture, most postures start the second we wanna get out of them. Breathe space, breathe light into the dark pieces in the body. One more inhale. As you exhale, slowly release your hands to the ground. Come into a runner's lunge. You're gonna turn your right toes forward. Now as we inhale, we're gonna straighten the left leg. As you exhale, bend. Straighten, bend, straighten, bend. One more, straighten. As you exhale, step your right foot in at least one foot length coming into your pyramid pose. So you wanna heel to heel here, inhale to lift the heart. And then as you exhale, begin to fold. You do not need to lock out your front knee. So if you need to bend into your left leg a little bit, do. You can walk your fingertips back if you want to, melting the heart, melting the chest. As you inhale, begin to look forward. Walk the left foot to the middle of the mat. As you exhale, step your right knee behind you and you're gonna sit down, coming into your Gomukhasana prep. So if this is not um, comfortable for you, you're gonna extend your right leg forward and cross your left knee over, okay? So this is gonna be your option one. If it is comfortable for you, you're gonna stay with the right knee bent, but everybody take your hands to the floor, lift your bottom up and reconnect to the ground. Only if you have both knees bent, okay? Wherever we are, fingertips come to the sides of the legs, lift the heart, lift the chest. And then as we exhale, begin to shift our gears down. So I like to spider finger, use the pressure into the fingertips to press and then allow the hips to sit closer to the floor. Pull the navel in, slightly check the chin. Then you're gonna find your way to where you're comfortable. If your bottom leg is straight, you're not gonna fold very far. Okay? If you have both legs, maybe you fold and melt your heart towards the thighs. Maybe you don't, okay? At any time your bottom lifts up, you're gonna back off. Breathe into the outer edge of the hip. Stay with the breath. And then you're gonna inhale, walk the hands up. And we're gonna come into our seated twist. So you're gonna take your left foot to the floor. You're gonna walk your um, right heel in a little bit closer. You're gonna lift the heart, lift the chest. We're gonna inhale, take the left arm to the sky. As we exhale, take the left hand back behind us. Inhale, right arm to the sky. And then as we exhale, right elbow to the left knee. Lift the heart, ground through the tailbone, and then begin to twist. Remember this twist, just like we did in the very beginning, is the upper back. So we're not looking to twist the torso, the, the lower part of the body, any further. It's the upper part of the torso, right? So it's thoracic spine, in between your shoulder blades and up. If you have a bind in your practice, by all means, take it. I'm not gonna cue it, because if you have one, you'll know how to get there. Right? I really wanna shy away from guiding things deeper, um, especially for those who shouldn't be going deeper, but don't know how not to try to go there just because the teacher says so. <laughs> Okay. 
Now as you inhale, if you have your bind, very slowly unwind. And then we're gonna take the legs, uncross them, but stay low. So all you're doing is taking your knees together. And then you're gonna come into a deep squat. Again, we're sitting, but our knees are together. We're gonna work our way into our side crow. We haven't done a whole lot of twisting to get into this. We've done side body stuff. We just did a little bit of twisting here. Um, so don't be too hard on yourself if this isn't something that comes to you today or ever. Arm balances might not be a thing for your practice. It's all good, sit with it. All right, so from here, we're already twisted to the side. You have your right elbow, rather, your right tricep pressing into your left knee. You're gonna take your hands down to the ground. Okay? And then we're gonna to begin to lift up off of the heels coming onto the toes. Maybe you walk your right hand more a little forward. Then you're gonna to look towards the left side of your mat and begin to lean. A couple of things here, I'm gonna break this down because we have time. You can take your left hip to your left elbow for this and begin to find your way there. The only thing with doing that is that you dip into the left shoulder. In the beginning, totally fine, but I do want you to get away from that because dipping into the shoulder dips into the shoulder girdle, hence why I'm so hardcore about proper chaturangas, okay, because shoulder girdles are sensitive. So for those of you who are more advanced, don't rely on your left elbow. You're going to look technically forward to the left, right? Lean forward get the connection. It's all about a balance here. So you're teeter-tottering the, the shins more towards the top of your mat here. Okay, so we're bending into the elbows, looking forward as we lift. Yeah? <laughs> no? <laughs> Again, if you need to have the connection to be, we have to start somewhere, okay? So if you need the connection, left hip, to the left elbow to find your balance. Once you feel that, move away from the elbow, okay? It's on to just your right arm. Okay, <laughs> now to find our way out. So wherever you were, release your hands down. We're gonna come into a forward fold. Come into a halfway lift. And then again, fold. No vinyasa for this round. Okay. Now there's like minus three vinyasas than normal. <laughs> We're gonna come back into our chair. Inhale, bend into the knees, tailbone down. You should be used to this by now. Sit with it, doesn't make it easier. And then we're gonna inhale into our stork. Take the left leg with you this time. Flex the left foot, knee in line with the hip. Big breath in, reach to the crown of the head. As you exhale, step into your warrior one. And again, you guys, find your way there. Shift your gears there. Okay. If y'all can land in perfect postures without moving anything, what's your trick? <laughs> I say that because I feel as though um, these days, things get so skewed with Instagram, you know, like you don't see what it took to get into the pose. <laughs> Allow your space. Inhale, arms sweep to the sky if they're not there already. As you exhale, take your hands behind your back. Interlace your thumbs. Right thumb comes on top. Roll the shoulders back and down. Gaze up as you inhale. And as you exhale, get humble. So either the right shoulder to the right thigh or take it inside. The head hangs heavy, gaze back. Draw your right hip back though. Don't let the booty stick out. We're not in a club. <laughs> All right, so if your hands aren't comfortable here, you can take your hands and um, grab onto opposite elbows as if you did on the other side. Press firm into the feet, let the head hang. Where can the breath go to bring light into the body? Release your hands down to the ground. Come into your runner's lunge. Left toes point forward. Bend into the front knee. Take an inhale. 
straighten the leg. Should feel really good after that as you exhale bend. Like I literally feel blood and feeling coming back into my body. <laughs> Inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. Straighten. Bend. One more straighten, stay here. Step your back foot in. Pyramid pose, lift the heart. Exhale to fold. And then again, you can keep your hands where they are. You can walk them back. Whatever feels best. Inhale, look forward, hands forward. Scoot the right foot into the middle of your mat. And as you exhale, bend into your left knee, sit down, getting set for your Gomukhasana. So if you had your leg extended on the other side, you're gonna do so here, left leg forward. Otherwise, you're gonna stack your knees one on top of the other, or as close to as possible. Use your hands, lift your seat, connect back into your mat. Lift the heart, lift the chest. And then again, we're gonna shift our gears down. Just make sure that the hips stay connected the whole time. So if they don't, you've gone too far. Slightly tuck the chin, find your depth, and then sit with it. Inhale to walk the hands back. We're going to come into our seated twist. Right foot to the floor. Scoot the left foot in. Unless your bottom leg is extended, it's going to stay there. Then we're going to come into the twist. Inhale, lift the right arm to the sky. As you exhale, take it back behind you. Belly forward. Inhale, left arm to the sky. And as we exhale, left elbow to the left, rather the right knee. And find your depth. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Belly button forward and go into the twist by looking back. If you found your bind on the other side, you're gonna do so here. Stay with the breath. And then as you inhale, if you have your bind, slowly begin to unwind. Then we're gonna be on the opposite side of our mat for our twist and getting into our side crow. So again, just uncross the legs, take the left foot to the floor, both knees are to the sky. Then we're gonna sit into our squat. So maybe we practice here, as I was saying earlier, right? We have to have a benchmark. We have to know where to begin. So to begin, maybe we stay just squatting in the twist. Otherwise, you're gonna take your left elbow to your right knee, right? Well, it's actually the tricep and the knee are connected, okay? Then we're gonna lift up onto the tippy toes. Take the hands to the ground. You're gonna find your gaze looking over towards the right. Okay, and then find your lean. Maybe you take the right hip to the right elbow. Maybe you don't. Play around with your edge. We're only going to be here for another 20 seconds. Slowly come back. Take your hands forward. Come into a halfway lift. Inhale. Fold as you exhale. Halfway lift as you inhale. 
And as you exhale, step your way into a plank and lower all the way down. Forehead to the ground, take your arms out to a T. Make sure that there's nothing in your way. And we're gonna come into our alligator pose here. So you're gonna take your right arm out to a T. Make sure that your right hand is in line with the shoulder or a little bit below. And then we're just gonna begin to walk the, well, the left hand should be underneath the shoulder already. Begin to roll onto the right side of the body. So your hips are stacked. And then maybe you take the left foot and step it behind you. But listen to the body. It's pretty intense on the shoulders. Today, I'm going to stay with my left hand in front of in my, my face. I was going to say our face, but <laughs> in front of my face. We'll only be here for a moment. Let's come out and get to the second side. So roll to the belly, left hand out, directly out or slightly below, not above. Left ear to the ground. And then you're going to stack your hips. Maybe you keep the right hand in front of the face and then we're gonna bend into the right knee and step it behind us only if that feels good. If it doesn't, don't go further. So a big part of our practice is listening to what the body needs. And gently come back to center, drop the forehead to the ground, take the hands underneath the shoulders. Biggest trick yet, Flip over onto your back. Once you're on your back, draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Maybe find a little rock. And come back to center. We've already twisted, um, but we're gonna twist just a little bit more, just not as deep or even at all if we don't want to, okay? Or if you want to go deeper, you're going to cross your right leg over your left. You're going to scoot your hips over to the right. Arms are at a goalpost or at a T. Then you're going to drop your knees over to the left as you allow your gaze to fall to the right. Close your eyes. And then very slowly and controlled, come back to center. Quick squeeze of the knees into the chest. And then we're gonna switch it out. Scoot the hips over to the left as we drop the knees to the right and we gaze left. Close the eyes. We're gonna inhale back to center, draw the knees into the chest, draw the forehead into the knees, big deep inhale. And as you exhale, find your Shavasana. Allow the palms to face up, feet to fall out, eyes to close. Sit with it. In the midst of emotions, upheaval or chaos, it is so easy to want to run and hide. Growth does not happen in the dark. 
It takes place in the light. Yes, dark times can cause growth. However, it doesn't happen when we hide. We've got to step out and sit within these moments to embrace them. We will get past the hurt, chaos, and challenges faster if we do. It won't make them go away, but it will allow for them to be less painful. What beauty buried in pain can we shine light on today? May we find it and sit with it rather than hide it in the dark. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll your wrists, your ankles. Turn your head from side to side. As you inhale, extend your arms up overhead for a nice full body stretch. And as you exhale, draw your knees to your chest, give yourself a squeeze. And from there, find your way to your favorite side. Use your bicep as a pillow and pause. And feel the connection with your mind, body, breath, and soul. May this connection stay with you beyond your mat today. Bring yourself up to a seat when you're ready. Once there, take your hands to your heart. Let your gaze fall down to your fingertips or close the eyes. And it's from the bottom of my heart to yours that I thank you for allowing me to be your guide today. Hands to our lips. May our words always be kind and true to others, but most importantly, always kind and true to ourselves. Hands to the center of our eyebrows, the center of our intuition and divine light. The highest in me honors and recognizes the highest in you, and together in this place and in this space, we are one. I humbly bow forward in honor of you. Namaste. All right, yogis and yoginis, if you made it to the end of this class, give me a thumbs up and let me know one thing that you're working on learning how to sit with. Um, for me personally, it's learning to really sit in the times where I'm angry and try not to outburst to other people. <laughs> um, and it's really learning to go with the flow. So there's a few things that I'm working on. Um, but now I want to dive into the education as to why I chose Peace and Calming for today's class. So Peace and Calming is a beautiful oil for our emotions. Um, it really does bring in peace to the mind and the body, brings in calming to the mind and the body, specifically the emotions, it's very emotionally grounding and stabilizing. And so when we find ourselves in these times of going, ah, I want to run and hide, I don't want to sit with this. We can use our peace and calming to help us to breathe through those moments of wanting to run and hide. Um, peace and calming is a new, not a new oil, but this is an oil that is new to the U.S. Premium Starter Kit for 2019. Um, this is one of the main go-to oils for my son for more than just emotional support. If you guys are ever curious what you get when you become an Omi with me, an oily Omi with me, you get 24-7 hand-holding. I'm here to walk along alongside you in your journey. I want to find out how I can support you in areas beyond your mat with the essential oils. I mean, we all know that we have areas like emotions and immune support and stuff like that, but really diving in and getting one-on-one -on -one with you of how we together can support you to live a life that feels good beyond our mat. So if you have questions, I'm here. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in our next class. Have a good one.